Well, good morning, everyone. Let's uh, start with session one, the big picture of the world of EV. I'd like to welcome our first speaker, uh, Wayne Westcott from Green Fleet, who's going to talk about the great challenge of climate change, which he described as a portal to sustainability. Over to you, Wayne. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I'm still, I'm still uh, fascinated by the notion of Austin pumping up his own tyres um, for those of you who were in the first session. Um, so I have no doubt that he'll fix his car in some kind of way and he'll go out there and he'll be scraping some, something onto it. So good on him. So I'd also like to add my acknowledgement and thanks to the organisers and also um, how lucky am I that, uh, you know, it's nine degrees in Melbourne today and um, it's kind of cool to be in. Um, also, one of our um, joys in our organisation is we get to work with traditional owners like Harvey Harvey and um, it's wonderful to be on their lands again and to, I want to acknowledge that. It's, um, I'm very grateful for the opportunity we have to work with them as well. We're a 25-year-old not-for-profit. We're probably, you're probably wondering why, why am I up here talking at an EV um, session. I'll talk, to, talk about it in a second. Um, but I've been asked to talk really uh, more generally about um, climate action. I suspect that we don't really need to go into it too much here. We probably have the coalition of the willing in this speaker's tent. You're all um, happy to sit in there quietly. But um, I think the way that we often talk about it now in Greenfleet is our requirement um, through this time of transition to focus on two things, reduction and removal. And reduction is what we're seeing in practice here at the moment. Reduction is changing the way <coughs> we live our lives to become a low emission, low emission um, economy. Reduction is very important, and I'll talk about that in a second. The second part of that is the need to remove carbon over the coming decades. Um, and I think this is an important distinction because over the last probably six to 12 months, there's been a lot of controversy in my area around what's called the carbon offsetting industry, and for good reason. One of the last things we need in this transition is for fossil fuel companies to use this as a means to extend their existing fossil fuel exploration and in fact expand. Um, that's not what Greenfleet stands for, and we are very cr are critical of an approach that takes that uh, way of working. So. That's why we use the word removal um, rather than avoidance. Um, as you probably know, through um, COP26 last year and through the pricing changes that were dramatic in my industry over the last couple of months, there's been a lot of controversy about a couple of methods, avoided deforestation and human-induced regeneration. Excuse the, um, the acronyms and the uh, HIRAB. Um, and they... Um, they are, are methodologies that are focused on avoidance. Greenfleet's work is by planting trees focused on sequestration of minerals. But it's very important that we rec recognise that um, we, we look to both governments, um, to organisations and the general community and ourselves, our own households, that we do whatever we can to both reduce um, and to remove that carbon um, and we're of the removal bit of that function. Um, so, so how does that work for us? So Green Fleet's approach, we're a 25-year-old not-for-profit, as was mentioned before. Um, so we're unusual, we don't take any government funding. We have discovered the importance of the community doing it itself. So we're supported by individuals and organisations. We work very hard planting trees, as was mentioned before, we've just planted our 10 millionth tree to offset carbon. We have millions of tonnes that will be sequestered on um, legally protected sites, over 500 around Australia and New Zealand. So it's a very good story, a quiet story, and for me, and a source of immense pride that the work we've been doing will all be there protected for my great-grandkids to see the end of the century. It sounds, you know, yes, I will confess to being a 60s hippie, um, I, I was, I started out at Friends of the Earth, so this for me is a very important thing and um, 
uh, and it's important to remember, we may know the price of things, but I can tell you the value, and the value of that is very high in my day-to-day -day work. So Greenplay focuses on three things, which I think are all really important issues, both for our country and our planet. Obviously, carbon sequestration, I've already talked about that. We have millions of tonnes sequestered in our forests, and every year we plant about another set of forests that will sequester 500,000 tonnes through the rest of the century. So that is removing carbon right now, and as we transition to a low-carbon low economy, removing carbon is critical. We don't want to keep on pumping this stuff out for the next 20 years before we get all get to renewables. We need to remove it as well. So that's an important part. And then if you want to do that, you can do that individually with a whole group of companies. You're, help, uh, you're welcome to do it with us. Secondly, we focus on ecosystem restoration. So what does that really mean? We focus on the, the enormous biodiversity crisis we have in our country and, and in our planet. And again, I think I'm probably um, talking to the converted, but um, this means that the work we're doing um, around the country and in New Zealand focuses very much on providing habitat, um, really important habitat, that's going to be uh, critical over the next rest of this century. The conservation movement's been around for a couple of hundred years. We've, we've managed to conserve environments in, um, and, and in particular institutionalised national parks. We now need to restore environments. That's the great, the great calling for us this century is to restore environments. Those environments never should have been cleared and there's no judgement on that. It was just the way it was. They should never have been cleared. We can restore them in a smart way and that's what we focus on, including very close jigsaw puzzling with agricultural systems, farms, etc. And then thirdly, so first the carbon sequestration, ecosystem restoration, the third big word um, is, uh, is Indigenous reconciliation. Our country has, um, you know, really squandered so many opportunities over so long and I think it's time for all of us to step up as best we can. We all know that we're about to go through a big political battle around the voice and I think, uh, regards to your politics on all of this, um, there is such a great need for us, each of us individually and through our organisations, to um, demonstrate what we can do practically. Um, Greenfleet's working closely with Kabi Kabi here, but also with Jacob Beener up in the Daintree and Jaja Wairongan in Victoria, um, which I'm happy to talk in, to any of you about afterwards. Um, so what brings all that together? Well, Noosa does actually, because we have here a project working in the Ural Ringtail um, area, which I'm sure many of you will know. Um, it's a fascinating project because it does all those three things. It's sequestering around about um, 700,000 tonnes of carbon. Uh, so that's carbon that will be removed from the atmosphere so that's, and, and, and permanently locked into our um, trees, in, into our forests. Secondly, it's going to be providing critical koala habitat, which, as we all know, astonishingly, is now an endangered species um, or threatened species. And so um, you know, here's this opportunity really to use an iconic community species to get people excited again about the need for biodiversity. And thirdly, we're working very closely with Kabi Kabi. Um, last year I signed an Indigenous land use agreement, which is a very rare thing for a not-for-profit. I'm working with that great group of, of applicants who cross fingers will have native title next year. Um, and the opportunity is, is to do something really special with them over the coming five year pro of the project. So there's an example of one planting forest that reaps all these multiple benefits. So, um, why is this all important here when we're wandering around looking at these amazing uh, EVs out here? So this is all part of the much bigger picture. We think of, I think of, climate action is really the portal to sustainability. We need to make our, our communities, our country, our planet more sustainable. Um, I've been part of the international push for that for many, many years, and it's a very disappointing and difficult process. And so what I have become more and more attuned to is doing it ourselves, doing what we can where we can. Yes, we need to vote, and wasn't it fantastic to see, regardless again of your politics, we needed that change federally to reboot everything. Um, and then secondly, that we need to get on and do it ourselves. We can't wait for governments, and all due respect to our government reps, either here or elsewhere, Good on them, keep doing it. 
but we need to take action ourselves. And what we're seeing now, of course, is the massive focus on electrification of everything. So our lives are becoming electrif uh, uh, electrified. And um, is there an electrification um, other verb you electrificated? I'm not sure, but there must be. And, and I was astonished, like probably some of you, to think that this is being powered by a car out here. Often Tesla is being, Teslas have been described, we work with Tesla, have been described as a battery on wheels, but I've never really seen it quite so beautifully um, illustrated as, as here, so all, all, um, all power to you, pun intended. Um, I love the fact that we can walk around here and we see these amazing changes happening. Um, I mean, I know the Commonwealth Bank study recently, many of you will have heard about noting that the driver for, for EVs, oh, this is a pun driven world we're living in here, I'm sorry. The, the key driver is, is clearly cost. People are concerned about rising energy costs right across the board, so they should be. And how, what an indictment of the lack of action in the last decade that, that we're in this position. But leaving that aside, we can't go back, we have to go forward. Um, and so, um, you know, if the driver is cost, that's true. But I have seen in my work, I'm very lucky that I get a chance to talk to a lot of major corporations from, Te from uh, Telstra right down. Um, and uh, I have seen a sea change, both with post-COVID, people resetting their values, and then, um, and now really thinking, okay, now what do we do? What, what's our next step? So they're being pressured by shareholders, board, staff, and supply chains. But there's also a personal shift going on, which I find very heartening. Um, so I think so. This is why we. This is why climate action, sustainability, is the context within which we might work here. Even though individually, many of us might do this because ultimately, if you can upfront the capital, it will save money. Um, a fair while, I think, at the moment, but not that far, given the way energy prices are going. So I thought um, to leave you with three sort of thoughts about how this might work as far as I can see strategically. And I know I'm talking to a few of you afterwards and happy to talk more. Um, and you can always connect to me via Brian um, anytime you like. That's part of my role in, in working for a not-for-profit is I talk to a lot of people and, um, and, and bring some of the industry experience to other people um, as part of my job. Firstly, I think the transition we're going through will happen much quicker than people think. Um, isn't it, I think Bundaberg has more solar panels than anywhere else in the country, Bundaberg, more places. Where we, we did a big, a big um, bit of work, planted about 90 hectares, 90,000 trees, just behind Monterey Po, to protect the Turtle Beach, which is really being impacted by the lighting from Bundaberg. So over time that will create a green curtain. So we got into the politics a bit. And it's quite a, um, I'd say, conservative um, area in some ways. I don't know how to phrase that politely. It's nothing worse than being an outsider and commenting on politics, is there? But it's an interesting place. Solar panels are everywhere. It's incredible. And um, so I think this is going to happen much quicker. I think there's a huge dammed up support. As soon as the charging system is up and it's not that far away, as soon as I'm talking to people out here, how quick, how much money is flowing in the battery and the charging, let alone all the clever ideas about how to fast track everything. Um, but secondly, once prices drop, um, supply chain issues are a problem post-COVID, but there's no doubt that there will be a, um, a massive change, and I think there's a huge down up support, knowing that my own, my own mates, my own friendship group is really interested in this, and are just looking for a price point for their experience. So, the transaction, transaction, uh, transition sorry, is happening, but it's going to happen much quicker than we think. There are a couple of significant potential setbacks and um, and, and bumps along the road. See, roadblocks. Um, it's perfect, really, this topic. Um, I mean, the biggest one for me is clearly Trump in 2024. But we, we assume the Republicans will win the midterms. Um, Trump will set that up for 2024. That's going to be an interesting one for the global economy slash um, the issues we are all dealing with. Uh, of course, you know, Ukraine and Russia, um, and maybe the next election which now people are, are, are talking widely about the fact that uh, Labor's in for two terms. I don't think you take anything for granted to go health leather now because you never know what's going to happen down the track. Um, 
So lots of potential for setbacks, which is why it's important in this quick transition we all push as hard as we can. We push really hard now because then we'll get we'll get something at the other end. And lastly, to remind ourselves that you know net zero, I'm not a fan of that term, but if it means anything, it means this notion of reducing and removing. So we've got to focus on reductions. Without that, it's useless. We have to reduce over time. But we all know this is not something we can do straight away. Um, we need to both reduce but also focus on removing for our governments, our businesses and ourselves. So, I leave you with those three points. The transition is going to be faster than we think. There will be lots of, there's lots of potential setbacks. And so we have to think now about how to get around those setbacks um, before they happen. And lastly, that um, reduce and remove is the mantra we need to be focusing on. Um, with that, I commend this um, fabulous session here. It's um, got nothing to do with the weather. It's simply that it's so beautiful to be able to wander around here and see so many EVs. Um, and as Greenfleet, we've been working obviously with EVs for a long time. Um, but to see the growth here is incredible. So I really want to commend the organisers. Um, and I won't name them, they've all been named, but thank you so much for your hard work. And I look forward to um, wandering further. Okay, thank you very much.